I, unfortunately, when Assad regains control of the country, and I think he is very much on that path, I think Assad is set to prevail in the civil war, uh, I think it, it'll be very much a Pyrrhic victory, which is to say I think that with Assad uh, back sort of safely in, in power in Damascus, um, the grievances, the underlying grievances that gave rise to the uprising uh, are still very much there and in fact, if anything, have been exacerbated. So I think this will be the Syria over which he will uh, have control is going to be a very violent and fractious Syria. Uh, I think it's going to be one that is continuing to contend with conflict. Um, and I think in particular, uh, we will see uh, the rise of a fairly potent uh, Islamist insurgency in Syria as the remnants of ISIS and al-Qaeda uh, evolve and adapt to circumstances on the ground. Uh, and, and I think, again, sort of rise up and, and push back against the regime and its elements. Well, I think there's great variance among foreign players and their desire to push for uh, a political settlement. I mean, I think for Russia, uh, a political settlement on its terms is very important. I think the Russians are looking to sort of have a victory from their intervention in Syria, which dates to 2015. Um, and I think they're, they're not interested in being mired deeply in Syria over the long haul. So they are looking for uh, a, a, a political settlement on their terms blessed by the international community. Other players, I think, I think there's a real difference. Um, Iran, for example. I think, is less interested in uh, political settlement and is perhaps benefiting from uh, the extent to which the regime remains weak and off balance and Iran is able to sort of fill the vacuum, if you will, fill the void uh, and, and be a, a significant player on the ground inside Syria. Uh, unfortunately, I think in the near term, we are looking more at the latter case. I, I actually don't see how we get back to the status quo ante, back to what Syria was before the uprisings. I think that that's a near impossibility. In the short term, as we are seeing, there are zones of influence uh, currently operating in Syria. There's, of course, the, the land that the regime has reconsolidated its, its control over. There's a Turkish zone of influence in northern Syria along the Turkish border. The United States and uh, its allies, uh, the Syrian Democratic Forces, have carved out significant territory in the east. I think it's these zones that will continue to sort of lay the, the landscape of Syria in the short term. Uh, but again, I think, and I think there's going to be quite a lot of, of contentious battling back and forth as various key stakeholders in the, in the conflict seek to, to lay their ground and stake their ground. Well, I think the U.S. has an important role to play in the Northeast in stabilizing areas that have been liberated from ISIS. Uh, that's the ostensible purpose for the U.S. being there. It's a fairly light footprint, a fairly small number of U.S. forces on the ground. But in partnership with Syrian, uh, local Syrian uh, partners, I think they've actually played a very important role in helping not only to liberate areas from ISIS, but begin to stabilize these areas. And that's going to be increasingly important in the coming months. Because I think what we've learned in, in the past, certainly from Iraq, for example, is it's incredibly important not just to win militarily on the battlefield, but it's critically important um, to stabilize those areas, to secure the peace, to ensure that local populations are vested in the structures uh, of governance going forward. And that will be the task in that part of Syria for the U.S.